Hey, Ingrid, we're back at it again. Season three of Life at ADP, the podcast. How have you been? I've been doing amazing. I I honestly can't believe that we are back for season three. It almost <laughs> feels like it was yesterday that we started the podcast. I know. It's so great to be back here in the studio with you. And we're kicking things off big today, um, <laughs> right? We have two superstars within ADP's talent acquisition organization. Uh, I don't know about you, Ingrid, but I'm like, how did we even get them on our calendar? So uh, we have a lot to cover in a short period of time. So without further ado, uh, you know, Tracy, can 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 we bring you on stage here? And uh, <laughs> do you mind introducing yourself? Sure, you got it first. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Tracy Schaefer, I started at ADP about 15 years ago as a technical recruiter and moved my way through some different leadership positions in technical talent acquisition. It has been an amazing experience, amazing journey. I uh, was learning and expanding, um, built out some innovation hubs in New York City and Pasadena, a new hub in Norfolk, Virginia. And then recently, about seven months ago, moved into the sales uh, marketing talent acquisition role, which has been tremendous, learning a lot about a new space, how it runs, seeing just how headcount and hiring directly impacts the revenue stream. So it has been an amazing experience. And then I have my partner in crime with me here, Glenn Dowling, who I'm going to let him introduce himself. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so much, Tracy. I definitely appreciate it. And thank you so much, Kate and Ingrid. Or even thinking about us, um, you know, we're just honored to be able to be here and just share this time with you. And, um, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, Tracy and I's backgrounds just recently crossed. Um, I'm actually leading executive talent acquisition and tech talent acquisition at ADP. So I have to fill Tracy's big shoes. She's left a remarkable mark um, in her career with all of the things that she's achieved. Um, but just way of background, I joined ADP in 2016 on the executive talent acquisition team. And I was looking for a place that I wanted to call home. I was looking for a place that I can really just settle down and just settle in. And when I came to ADP and I interviewed at the time, I just really fell in love with the people. There was just something magical about the people that we met here that I, that I met, you know, as I went through that interview process and joined on the executive team, um, kind of climbed through the ranks on the team, um, just taking on more and more over the years. And I like to affectionately say that the reward for good work is more good work. Um, so the scope in the portfolio just continued to expand. And um, in, uh, in 2020, I had an opportunity to um, step into a leadership role in terms of providing some more leadership for the team. Um, and then today, obviously, leading the team. So um, my my team overall covers um, executive talent acquisition through all business units and functions at the senior director and above level. And on the tech side, it's really end to end with the exception of campus. Um, so we have a we have a, we have an exciting team that's just really, really passionate about talent acquisition and really finding the best and brightest talent to bring them into ADP. And if I have to look at the crowning achievements, it's really just hiring some of our most senior level executives just throughout the organization and just really seeing their careers um, just grow and shine. And it can point back to that just one encounter um, with our team that just made that difference. Can, can I just add one thing? Glenn says he had big shoes to fill. They're stilettos. So, Glenn, I hope you're walking comfortably. <laughs> hey, listen. He does not have big shoes to fill, but I just wanted to point out, I wear heels and they're high. <laughs> yes, they are. Listen, you rock those red bottoms well. <laughs> I love this. And Ingrid, I'm sure you feel the same way, right? We're We're here sitting in a room and it's hard not to look around and just smile. You know, I, I feel like we're amongst friends. I hope our listeners feel like we're amongst friends. And uh, I'm having a little bit of an interesting moment here looking at everyone that Glenn was my recruiter. Mm. I mm. interviewed with Tracy <laughs> and Ingrid was my first friend. at Wow. Aww, so, yeah, I mean, big hugs, right? <laughs> 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 big hugs. So this is really, really special. And I know Ingrid was... Equally excited to have you both on the call. Um, uh, so Ingrid, how about we we kick things over a little bit to talent acquisition? Because I know we have a lot of people right now that are listening who are curious about, um, you know, what's happening right now within the candidate market. We've heard a lot, especially recently, of 
organizations, unfortunately, having to make some really hard decisions, um, whether that's downsizing or, or whatnot. Uh, and we're in a unique position where, you know, we're, we're still looking for top tier talent. Um, so what do you think, Ingrid? Should we, should we switch things to TA? Absolutely. Sounds good. So as you were mentioning, you know, talent market, it's super hot right now. You know, I want to take this topic and ask Glenn, our expert in tech, what are those trends that you are seeing in the market right now? Ingrid, thanks for that question. I definitely appreciate it. You know, you're, you're seeing a shift and a change in the market where it's definitely candidate driven. Um, candidates are looking for the right role, not only that they're moving into, but just also looking at career pathing. I think that's something that's really, really important for them. You know, uh, very often people would think that money is the number one driver. You know, while money is important, you're seeing a change and a shift right now where culture is probably the most predominant thing. People are looking for a good culture for them to work in. They're looking for a good leader to work for. And they're interviewing us as much as we're interviewing them. And that's something that, you know, we're starting to see across the board as we talk to a lot of our colleagues. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, I, I definitely could agree with that. You know, culture is super, super important as well as, you know, career progression. So Tracy, for sales, what are those trends that you're seeing right now, super, super hot in the market? Sure. So same trends as Glenn, just to build upon that um, outside of comp and benefits, you know, with COVID and coming post-COVID, people are really looking for flexibility, balance, work life, work integration, um, and really a lot too around their mental health, well-being, you know, mm -hmm. worrying about burnout. So they're asking questions about you know, the job, the work, um, really diving into that. Is it a, really a fit for them and their lifestyle? They really want to make sure it is, you know, it is a match. So what I've heard from from both sides, uh, you know, tech and sales is culture, mental health, um, flexibility. And those are the the intangibles. You know, those are the things that you can't necessarily, you know, see. Uh, they're, they're really things that you feel when you join an organization. You know, I, I think at ADP, we do a really great job of bringing that warmness forward, um, whether you're a visitor on campus or one of our many campuses or um, even just through a phone call. You know, everyone here has that um, can-do sort of a culture around here. It's one of the things that I think keep people here for, for so long and, and has built the stability behind us as an organization. Let, let's switch things a little bit from trends as far as like who we are as an org and what the candidates are interested in. What are the, what are the things that we look for in a candidate? What does it take for someone to stand out during the interview process. And um, the second question would be, you know, so stand out in the interview process, but then also, you know, really make it here. What are some of those qualities? So we started with Glenn first last time. Let's start with Tracy and then we'll pass it over to Glenn. Sure. So I think, you know, from a soft skills perspective, personality, positivity, um, things like that, ethics and values are always something that's in our core. Um, so we always look for that in an interview, but resiliency, um, you know, especially geared towards sales, for example, not taking no for an answer, that positivity comes in there again, learning and adapting to new things, definitely what we want to look for in an interview, where they've done that in the past and how they can bring that in to this role. Um, and what was the second part of that question? <laughs> no, that's fine. The second part is um, uh, what what does it take to succeed? Like mm. when they're here, so when they get hired, what are some attributes um, right. where associates succeed? So one of the things you'll constantly hear throughout this podcast is the culture, and really, this is a culture that is highly collaborative. Um, we stop and we help each other. So yeah. someone who really does take the time to stop and help somebody learn or grow, whether they're new or whether they've been here for years, it doesn't really matter. We truly care about each other. And people like that do grow within the organization. Tracy, that was such a great point. The minute you talked about adaptability, it just brought to mind that is one of the key things that we look for. Uh, you know, some places look for IQ, which is great. 
some people look for EQ, um, which is equally as important, but that adaptability quotient is huge. You know, what I think um, helps somebody succeed here and do well is really exhibiting intellectual curiosity. Somebody who takes the time to ask the right questions, connect the dots, put things together, because what that does is it helps them exude a position of really positive optimism. They're looking at the glass half full instead of half empty, and they can start to be solution seekers and finders, which really helps them um, really enhance what they do. Listening to both of you, you know, what's what's hot right now with candidates, the questions that they're asking, attributes that we look for in candidates, whether it's tech or sales, um, and then also what it takes to succeed here at ADP. Um, you know, having gone through both sides firsthand, you know, Ingrid and myself, quite frankly, um, you know, it, it really is resonating. Um, and, you know, I, I think some of those attributes as well as, you know, growth models are pretty evergreen, right? Because, you know, culture is who we are here. And, mm -hmm. you know, we do hire people who, um, you know, are going to want to go that extra mile and or are really organically just good people. You know, um, it's very hard to 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 find someone who you just don't like in the org. I literally can't think of anyone, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so we're all very fortunate. Uh, so so I think that's really amazing. Um, you know, I'm trying to think back to like my candidate days, you know, it, it was culture. What's culture like? Um, what are expectations in this role? Are there any questions right now that either of you are being asked that are a little unique, but they're coming up more and more? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on this one because I think you're seeing a pool of candidates that are a little bit more savvy. They're taking the time to do a lot of their research before they come into a conversation with a hiring manager. And because so much information is public, they're checking people out on LinkedIn, their social platforms, and they want to be tied to somebody who's going someplace. So they're making a point of view and, and kind of coming up with an opinion before they even come in for a conversation. And what they're looking to see is, is the person that they see or the persona that they see online align with the person that they're talking to. So they're looking for that level of consistency. You know, Trace, what are you seeing? Off the beaten path question would be, I'm starting to get more and more around what we're doing, you know, I, in terms of environmentally or socially, are we doing our part? What are we doing for our part? We're such a large company. How are we helping, right? And some of it may be more um, environmental work that we do, and some of it may be more of helping in our communities that we serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. That's that, that, that's that's a big thing. Like, what are we doing to give back? Yeah, it's not so focused on the me. It's focused on the us or the yeah. we. Yes. Right. That's one very big thing that I think has shifted and that we're seeing. And it's really nice. And it's really nice to have some great answers, <laughs> which we do. That's that's really, really awesome. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking as you both share and it just comes to my mind that candidates are definitely more and more mindful mm -hmm. of, you know, their decisions and the companies that, you know, they want to go and work for. And so. It kind of makes me think about the next question, right? Um, boomerangs. And for many of those who may not know what a boomerang is, we take this term to refer to those associates who left and then came back to us. So my question for either Tracy or Glenn or the two of you is boomerangs. Are you mm -hmm. still seeing them? Is mm -hmm. there kind of like a hike in seeing those candidates coming back to ADP? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So I'm happy to start with this one. Yes, we are seeing a ton of boomerangs and it's people that have left recently over the past year or two, but it's also people that have left and have been gone for five or nine years. Um, and one of the things we hear a lot is that ADP really is a special place. Mm -hmm. It's not just the stability and what ADP is, but it really is the people and the environment and the culture. You just can't get that just anywhere. Um, they're realizing that the career path and advancement at EP was greater than they thought it was. They're realizing, you know, to quote a term, the grass isn't always greener and just the wonderful people and the ad advancement and mobility that they have here really isn't like any other place. Yeah, that, that, that that's spot on, Tracy. And we're seeing it happen now where people might feel like in a certain role or certain position that they get maxed out. And they leave and they go to a company, they pick up some new skills, and they're coming back just a better version of themselves. 
So they never left ADP because of the culture. They left, maybe it was the opportunity, maybe it was a personal situation, but it's it's interesting that people still keep ADP top of mind when you're thinking about places that they want to come back to. And people, even after they leave, keep in touch with their hiring leaders and, and their teams. So mm-hmm. it's something we see, and we're open to obviously having those types of conversations, you know, with talent that's interested in coming back. Well, and what I love about what you both just said, too, is that really supports and is a proof point to our whole conversation around culture and the sort of mm-hmm. people who we are, right? Yeah. Because if we were an organization that was icky or, you know, not not good intended, people wouldn't want to come back. Absolutely. You know, right. And, you know, folks leave to your point, you know, both of your points, you know, they, they want to pursue something else. You know, they may have felt like they maxed out of their current role, you know, and we do encourage like, listen, as long as ADP is a stepping stone in your career and you want to evolve and, and come back with different skills, you're welcome back here, you know, mm-hmm. Um and I think that that's, that's important. And, you know, people come back because the work we do is meaningful. Mm-hmm. We are changing the future of work. The technology that we have behind human capital management right now out in the market is unmatched. Mm-hmm. The stability of our organization. I, I don't mm-hmm. think we talk about that enough. I don't, I think, I think we all would agree with that. You know, we yes. tend to be a very modest organization. And at the end of the day, far and few between do you hear of any sort of major changes happening here that are harmful? We are a stable company. We consistently put out good good numbers to the street. Our leadership is bar none, you know, and that starts from the top down. So I think that that there's a lot to be said. You know, not every organization has boomerangs, and I would I would challenge, and none of us will talk to this, but I'm sure we each have one of those organizations in our mind where we're like, I would never go back there. There's yep. not enough money in this world. <laughs> Say that, Kate, because I think about what my experience has been like before coming to ADP, and there has not been many places where I would say, oh yeah, I want to run to go back to. And you know, when I look back at my career in talent acquisition, you know, the 15 years that I had in other places felt like 15 one-year sports contracts. So you're only as good as the year before. Whereas at ADP, and Tracy, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like I build equity where every year I'm building my name, I'm building my brand, I'm building a reputation. And the years get stacked on top of each other versus feeling like those one-year contracts. Yeah. They definitely appreciate the whole you. This company yes. does. It appreciates the whole you, hundred percent. I completely agree, Tracy and Glenn. I mean, I have never experienced in another company, you know, what it really means to bring your whole self to work. And here at ADP, we do welcome everyone, and mm-hmm. I believe that that's kind of like the secret sauce for our culture, you know, our amazing diversity. Um, and let's talk. Let's talk about diversity at ADP from your perspective, right? Mm -hmm. What are those things that we do as an organization? What are those things that we do to celebrate our associates and who they are? Ingrid, thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, You know, diversity is important and we're seeing that happen with candidates. And I know we talked about, you know, culture and corporate social responsibility, but candidates are asking about diversity. They want to know that there's diversity amongst the team. They want to know that there's diversity in leadership. They want to know diversity in senior leadership. So when I look at it, you know, I have, I'm proud to say that we're a company that that really, you know, walks the talk. You know, some people may be surprised about it, but, you know, the fact that Maria Black was just announced as our CEO, you know, she is in in the top 10% of female CEOs at Fortune 500 companies. It's, it's an incredible stat when you, when you think about that. Mm-hmm. So when somebody comes in and they look at the organization and they're seeing that, hey, Maria is the current CEO, Carlos Rodriguez was our former CEO. Um, that speaks volumes because it really starts from the top down. So when you think about just diversity as a whole, you know, we have business resource groups for people um, to get connected um, and because we want people to bring their entire whole self to work. You know, whether it's, you know, women in technology, whether it's blacks in technology, you know, whether it's, you know, Women's History Month or Black History Month. These are all things that, you know, we just we just don't announce it. We celebrate it. 
So we have that community that cares about each other and we want to see people, um, you know, succeed here. Yeah. Just to piggyback off of that, I would say we celebrate our differences every day. We really do um, because we appreciate and enjoy them and we appreciate and enjoy one another. To give you another stat that I just learned is that the U.S. population is 50 percent female, but ADP is 53 percent female. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. So and I know I learned a, a stat about Maria Black also. This is though Fortune 200 companies. I've heard one of two female CEOs in Fortune 200 companies. Mm. And, you know, the thing with diversity, too, is, you know, it's uh, first of all, I think it's amazing. I would argue personally, I'm not going to speak for for the three of three of us in the room. You know, I wouldn't work for an organization that doesn't have something like our business resource groups. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just I wouldn't, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, again, that ties back to, you know, culture, obviously, but, you know, the, the, the importance of the business resource groups are so that, you know, everyone within ADP knows that they belong. Um, mm -hmm. And also, though, to bring the powerfulness of diversity and learnings to the organization, because the reality is, is we cannot evolve and elevate our products and how we position ourselves in the market without diversity. You know, it's it's just that simple. And, yep. um, you know, something that that's really on the forefront, too, uh, of of diversity. And I know, Glenn, this just came up in a team meeting that you had had is um, neurodiversity. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and the work that we're doing um, as far as that goes. And I know that's a huge uh, a huge initiative in the forefront from an organization standpoint, from a technology standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. Ingrid and I met with uh, Giselle Mota um, season season one, and she talked about the importance of diversity and um, also being neuro neurodivergent. So um, shameless plug to those of you who are listening to us for the first time, please go back to season one, episode one and check out Giselle. Uh, you do not want to miss that episode. Um, but yeah, I think these are all really valid points. And, and I hope that, you know, to the folks who are listening now who have considered, um, you know, uh, checking out to see what we have to offer here, please do. Um, you know, we, we have our career websites, uh, you know, tech.adp.com and jobs.adp.com. Um, you know, where we have all of our jobs located at, uh, and then, you know, hopefully <laughs> that will lead you to, uh, Tracy or Glenn or one of our many other amazing, um, leaders within the, the talent acquisition organization. Kate, I was just going to, I'm just going to add, you know, one of the things that, that we share with many leaders is that we ask them to join a BRG that is personal to them, but then join another BRG that they're an ally for. And it's great to be able to see people across BRGs learning and growing together. And I think this is just, it just really helps people just have a culture of more belonging and understanding because you can take the time to understand other people's cultures. And I, I know as an organization, we do a really great job of harnessing that internally, but then also from an external standpoint, you know, and, and Ingrid will absolutely um, contest to that too, you know, as we're on the same team. But, you know, within our, our, our team of employer brand and marketing, there's a tremendous amount of outreach, uh, specifically around, you know, the historical months and beyond. Um, so whether it's, you know, uh, International Women's Month, um, Black History Month, Pride Month, um, you know, and, and we're always trying to have those global touch points too. Uh, you know, it just so happens that we're all U.S. based, but, you know, for those of you who don't know, ADP is a global organization with about 60,000 associates across the world. Um, and, you know, so we do a really great job internally and externally to, um, you know, showcase who our associates are. And as Tracy said in the beginning of the episode, you know, celebrate who we are as individuals. And and, and our team specifically loves to amplify that, you know, on mm -hmm. our career social handles and newsletters. And, you know, however, um, I would argue this podcast is a little bit of that too, right? We're here to celebrate, mm -hmm. you know, the amazing work that you both are doing and your teams um, and the, you know, the extension of, of talent acquisition. So all, all really great stuff here as far as it goes for, you know, our associates and diversity and the importance of, of who we all are um, together. Hey, that, that was amazing. And, you know, if this doesn't 
shows diversity at ADP. I don't know what else will. I mean, and if you're not convinced at this point, then I would actually ask you to reach out to me because as a diverse candidate or diverse associate, I could definitely confirm that, you know, ADP is definitely a place where you are celebrated, not just tolerated, mm. um, which is something that I learned recently. And, you know, it was super impactful to me. And uh, yeah, the, the BRGs, our business resource groups, are those amazing little communities inside ADP where you could learn more about your asso associates, you know, coworkers, cultures, different cultures. Um, but in addition to that, thanks to the BRGs, um, you know, you could also learn about career mobility. Um, and so I'll go to you, Tracy. So one of the things that we look to to partner with our BRGs from a talent acquisition seat is getting our jobs out to our BRGs so they know what we have opened, whether it be um, focused on leadership roles or individual contributor roles. So important we partner with them so they know what we have opened, what they have available to them. And we can start to have conversations even, career conversations. Tracy has such a good point. You know, when when the roles are posted, that really helps in terms of active searches that are going on. What I've also seen with some of our associates is that because of the BRG connections, they start to hear about things that may be coming and they start to know about, um, you know, people. And it really helps in terms of their networking efforts. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that, you know, the more that they're able to network and, and get their brand out there and work on stretch assignments and projects, that just gives them some more visibility and just adds to some of the diversity of the work. So when something does come up, they can actually be thought of for different opportunities. 100%. I think this also brings up a really great point that might be a little controversial. Um, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I know. Here we go. Are we ready for it? So, you know, <laughs> BRGs, diversity, networking, stretch assignments. We're going to talk about the flex model, remote and in the office. I know it's controversial, but here's the reality, right? At, at ADP, we do have, you know, the flex model, three days in, two days out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we said from the beginning, you know, one of the great things about being here is the flexibility, um, so, you know, there's always exceptions, right? You, you, we're all people. We all, and, and I think ADP does an amazing job of honoring that we are individuals outside of these parameters of, you know, three, two, as we call it here. I would argue, and I'll be the first to say that when we were going back to the office, I was like, oh my gosh, I love sitting at home in my sweats. And I do, I, I, I do. <laughs> you've all, you've all seen it. Um, however, I, I want to extend on what both um, Tracy and Glenn shared is that, you know, with the with the mobility, um, you know, part of that is that in-person touch that you just can't get from the computer screen, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think we would all uh, agree with that on this call and, and probably beyond. And I think that's so important. And that also makes up mm -hmm. that thread of, of who we are. Um, you know, it's those networking opportunities. It's, you know, those stretch assignments. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really those even passings in the hall that you're like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I haven't seen you in so long. And you give people a big hug. Yes. You know, um, I, I think that that goes a long way. And, you know, I would I would challenge anyone who's listening. That's always been, you know, I want to be pure remote. If you're working with the right people and for the right organization, anything can happen. Yeah. You know, so much work gets done or ideas or networking in the hallways, in the cafeteria, just by the impromptu bump ins. Yes. You can't get that when you're sitting at home. <laughs> you just can't. That's all right. I mean, everything's scheduled at that time. Exactly. <laughs> you're not going to bump into somebody on a, your, you know, WebEx platform or whatever platform <laughs> you use. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's interesting that you say that because. You know, many companies are have embraced a hybrid model. Now, again, I know some companies have gone fully remote and, you know, there are pros and cons to it, but most companies have adopted a hybrid model. And there's some companies that have gotten even more aggressive 
you know, asking people to come in four, even five days a week. So I think our hybrid model is is really effective for the times that we're in. So you get the perfect balance of being able to be in an office and to collaborate and to exchange ideas and to meet people, as well as being able to go home and to do the things that you need to do to be able to make things at home a priority as well. Mm-hmm. I, absolutely. And you want to know what? To that point, too. Um, and this is more of a proof point, I guess, to our listeners, but also our conversation is, you know, we're a global org, right? If we were this um, nine to five organization where we all had to be in the office, a global org wouldn't work. You know, we have our associates in Asia Pac, we have our associates in India and EMEA and, uh, you know, Australia all over. That's the beauty of being a global org is that, you know, there's flexibility built into our business model. That's right. That's right. I, I'm glad to see that we're in this hybrid model. I, I think it really works for for who for who we are. And uh, I mean, look at all of us where, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough to be in the room today together. But, you know, usually Ingrid's out in Pasadena, you know, I'm down in Alpharetta, Georgia, you know, obviously, you know, well, not obvious to our listeners, but Tracy and Glenn, you're up in New Jersey, um, where Ingrid and I both originated from. We, we've since moved, which yeah, also talks to flexibility. That's right? Right. Yeah. Ingrid and I were able to say, you know, hey, we have opportunities elsewhere for our families. You know, may we have permission to move? And the organization, you know, supported that. I mean, you you do not find that everywhere. Let's be honest. No. You don't. You don't. That's so good. Hey, Tracy and Glenn, thank you. That was definitely a lot of amazing information, you know, really good um, conversation that we had. And so one more question before we go. I know there's probably a lot of people out there considering what it's next for them, you know, what should be the next move in their career. And because of the amazing career path that you both have and your experience, I want to ask you, um, would you mind sharing with our audience um, what what are those recommendations or advice for someone who is considering, you know, their next step in their career? Tracy, I go to you first. Sure. So I would say really be your, your authentic self and really ask questions that are meaningful to you so you can get the answers and determine, is that a right match for you? You know, the, the companies are always going to interview you, but make sure you take the time to interview them and ask them the questions that are important to you. So, so good, Tracy. You know, I would, sure. <laughs> I would just, I would just add on that and just say, you know, sometimes your career may feel like a ladder and sometimes it may feel like a jungle gym and it's okay. You know, sometimes you may have to go sideways in order to go up. Don't be afraid to take on new responsibilities, take on new challenges, learn new things, you know, challenge your own way of thinking. Cause I think it just really helps to make you even better right now. Well, Ingrid, season three is going to be tough for us. Cause I, I don't know how we top this. I mean, you and I both know what the rest of our season looks like. So <laughs> we're in good hands and great company, but this was just such a tremendous pleasure. And, um, you know, thank you again, Tracy and Glenn for sitting down with us. Uh, you know, the energy that I'm feeling in, in this room and, you know, looking around at everyone is just, it, it, it's infectious. You know, and uh, my hope is that, you know, everyone listening to our podcast uh, feels the same way um, and, and that they're they're going into whatever they're doing with a big smile on their face and that they feel like they have a little bit more of an idea of who we are. You know, here here we are just four different diverse people and ourselves um, with very different backgrounds. And it, this really felt just like sitting down with lifelong friends. So thank you both so much for, for sitting down with, with Ingrid and I. We, we so greatly appreciate it. Tracy, Glenn, thank you so much. This was a really, really good conversation and I appreciate it so much. Thank you again for, you know, having this amazing discussion. Well, the pleasure was ours and thank you so much for having us. Yeah, same here. This was a total blast. It was great seeing you all. Thank you so much for the invitation. Would love to be able to do it again. Great. Thanks, everyone. This was Life at ADP, the podcast, and we'll catch up with you next month.